Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'll be sharing tips and tricks to level up your Aldini skills, from simple back snippets to less known subs. Hopefully you'll get away with something worth it. Let's get started. So in this part example I wanted to show you how you can use the rest space to split prims in half. Basically by creating these the roofs that you can see in here and also how to do these uh, random rotations also to fit the clip note. So basically, as you can see in here, I have these clip nodes and just one. We don't need to iterate over each frame to clip it in half. And each one has a random orientation, as you can see. And the way I'm doing that is by setting up, uh, after isolating the frames, I'm setting a normal attribute in here, a vector. That is using the sample direction uniform to create a step orient attribute. So basically, each 90 degrees, it should have a random rotation on each prim, so I'm using the prim num as a seed plus a random number and I can come in here and play with a different seed and get a different result. After that I'm creating a rest attribute, so basically getting the bounding box center of each prim, then uh, saving the current position as a rest attribute or a rest variable, then from that rest I subtract the center to move every prim to the center, as you can see. And then I do the rotation using that normal attribute we just uh, saved and also doing the rotation in here on the rest. Then, and this will mean that if I assign this to the position, we will have them in there on the center as you can see and also with the random rotation. So we can actually don't need to do that because we can clip by attributes and using that rest. That way we have the prim split in half because we have the rest attribute at the center of the world and with random rotation we can come in here play with the random uh, with the seeds and as you can see if I apply this to position we will get just a random cut in here not random just a, a cut on the center of the world but in this case in rest we can apply to every prim as you can see so yeah that was the first tip so for this project I was trying to do a procedural salmon texture for the sushi piece and the way I ended up doing it was with cops so by importing the, the piece of geometry with UVs and instead of going through the rasterize setup and rasterize geometry I am using the, the UV disk function to rasterize the original position which allows me to have uh, some expansion, uh, some edge bleed, some padding, I mean, along the edges. So this way it doesn't create that problematic issue on the edges that the rasterize geometry does. So as you can see, I can get rid of the height. So as you can see, this is perfectly fine. If I set this to zero, uh, well, it won't work. But if I set it really low, you might start to notice some issues, but not in this case. So anyways, I'm rasterizing the original position, which is the position that we have in 3D space. By using UVDist and PrimUV, we have looked at this before. Then I'm extracting a mask along the X using the relative point bounding box and pointing at the geometry and doing that relative bounding box, which will look similar to this. So just a, ma a mask along the X axis, as you can see. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to use that, this mask to rotate the original position around the y-axis. So that's what I'm doing in here. As an angle, I'm using that mask. And which means that my original position will be rotated. And when I create the salmon pattern, I will have this pattern like this. As you can see along the x, it will get uh, more and more rotated. So if I don't do that, so if I just use V at RHP in here, as you can see, it will be straight. But I wanted that rotation, so I'm using that rotated version to create the pattern. And the pattern isn't too hard either. So what I'm doing in here is taking that X mask that we saved, which I'm doing in here again and feeding that into a scene and uh, also make it absolute and in this case I wanted to invert it so I made it 1.0 minus 
multiplied by pi to have the correct amount of repetitions, in this case 10, and also introduced some noise in here to distort a bit the pattern, as you can see, if I disable that, you will see that we have a perfect pattern going on, but I wanted that noise. Then we just need to to play with the, with the mask, so we can grow or shrink the effect, and then modulo, in this case I'm doing the modulo, uh, I don't think it's needed in here. Yeah, it's the same, so we don't need that modulo because we're already using the scene and the absolute function. Maybe I was playing with something different at the time. And yeah, that's basically it, then I'm blending in some noise and some some other type of noise, in this case a whirly noise, converting it to RGB, and that's my albedo, basically. So if I connect this in here, and I also have a night texture that I'm creating using this uh, black and white version. But yeah, that's basically it for the Salmon texture. As always, you can grab the full scene on my Patreon uh, and you will be able to see how I put these all together. So still on this project, I had these avocado pieces that I simulated with RBD to be in the center of the sushi as you can see in this case i'm doing a transform at the end but yeah i have these pieces simulated and i want to replace them with high poly geometry so the first thing i'm using uh, for, in order to, to use rbd you need packed objects so in the copy two points where i'm copying the first set of pieces i'm going to pack an instance this way it will get from so it will get from this transform, it will pack them and save that pack transform. Then also RBD will will compute that pack transform. And then I'm saving that uh, in a file cache after the simulation. And then I can just import the original pieces. In this case, I'm doing a peak, a subdivide and a mesh sharpen. And I'm going to pack them again using the name attribute that I've set. Attribute promotes to a point attribute the name and in here I can just use a pack inject and it will replace the the low poly geometry with the high poly one that I've created in here again using the original transforms before the copy two points like I showed you in here so as you can see this is the same geometry that I'm bringing in then you can transform it and I'm also saving a name attribute here somewhere so yeah I have the name attribute from the Voronoi fracture as you can see since I started with this avocado shape. So yeah, pack transform, pack inject, I mean, it can be frustrating at times that it doesn't work, but just bear in mind that it needs the intrinsic transform attributes that we do have uh, in here. If we look at the prims and pack transform, so let me see, transform, as you can see. And in this case is a 3x3, three three, but we should have a packed full transform that is a 4x4. Four four. And as you can see, we have translation, we have rotation and scale also. So yeah, that's the tip I wanted to share, pack, pack inject. So I started working on this procedural building project two days ago. And although I'm not going to release it right now, I'm going to show you a tip in here that is on how to create this piece of geometry in here. So basically, we can start at the top. I'm isolating a prim, then resembling it to four segments and transforming to be oriented towards the z-axis. Just removing the geometry with an add node, delete geometry, but keep points. Then I do an enumerate and create an ID for each point. Copy and transform these around. To, to the top and uh, set the scale to zero. So we, we have four points at the top and four points at the bottom. If we add by attribute, we should have these lines connecting. And now I want to create that effect of trans bulging it out. And the way I'm doing that is after resampling the curves, of course, because we need enough geometry, we can create a tangent attribute. In this case, I'm setting it, uh, setting it as normal. So it's just a tangent going along the curve with an orient along curve. Then in here is where I'm creating that uh, bulging effect. And basically I'm using the curve view, or in this case uh, using vertex curve par param, uh, which is the same as curve view, and remapping that curve view with the ramp I want so I can 
change the way this deforms as you can see so i can come in here and change the, the settings then i'm creating a normal and let's have a look at that normal so if i set this to v at underscore n so the first no normal is just a cross product between the normal which is the tangent and the negative y-axis and that could look something like this so let me resize this it's just uh, a vector pointing away f or tr through the x-axis let's say with the local x-axis of the curve and then i'm doing the double cross product between the normal and that calculated n which will look something like this so pointing out and this way i can deform the curve along this normal so v at p plus equal v at n along this normal by u and i'll also have an m slider that i can change in here and i can manipulate in here the curve so let's say we want something like this so yeah that's basically the tip i wanted to share in this one and as always you can grab sample files on my patreon and also have access to exclusive tutorials hours and hours of exclusive tutorials and about this project which i should be sharing it some more information soon i hope to release it uh, in the next weeks again thank you for watching uh, and i'll see you next time